Welcome back to part four of my sixth YouTube video on coronavirus. Well, in, in this litigation now, the brand company found that out. And they said, you didn't submit this formulation to FDA. We're going to, if you don't, within 24 hours, withdraw your challenge to our patent and withdraw your application from FDA, then we're going to go report you to this wolf pack of prosecuting lawyers at FDA who have little, nothing to do, and they're looking for someone to go devour. So I went to our attorneys and I said, who are in Washington, D.C., they're FDA law attorneys. I said, um, is this true? It was just a mistake. We'll just turn over to FDA. Sorry, we made a mistake. Here's the, the study and the formulation, and we weren't trying to get drug approval on it anyway. He said, Dr. Roberts, sorry. If you get reported to this wolf pack, they will descend on your company. They will paralyze everything. They'll be um, investigating. They'll be asking for millions of pages of other documents. They'll be looking at other drugs. They'll be interviewing um, uh, employees. You're going to have to get lawyers for everybody. It's going gonna, it's gonna to basically disrupt your entire operation. He said, you really have no choice. And that's what we did. I, first of all, I didn't give in in 24 hours. You have to know me. The game of chicken, you know the game of chicken? The game of chicken is when two people, two people are in a car and they decide they're gonna floor it at each other and they're gonna keep going until one guy is chicken and he turns off at the last second. And if nobody turns off, they crash. I've played chicken in business or in life many times. I'm always willing to crash. I never play chicken unless I'm willing to crash and I don't turn off. So when they told me, this brand company, that we had 24 hours to make a decision, I realized these lawyers are committing, committing extortion against us. That's a crime. So we met with them next. I told them I need time to investigate this, which was true. Like they're telling me, the other side's lawyers are telling me that we didn't submit this study. I'm the president and CEO. I have no idea how many studies we did, what was submitted or not submitted, and we have to wade through many thousands of pages of documents, through our records, through all the studies we've done, and figure out if it's true or not. And I told them, you're committing extortion. And they said, we're going to go, 24 hours, and I called their bluff, and after 24 hours, they didn't, um, they didn't go to, the, to this group. But after about a week of me putting them off, and they're giving me deadlines, I, I found out that we really did miss sending, the, this, send, sending this study in. It was purely by accident. It really had no impact whatsoever on the validity of the, of the formulation and the approval we wanted to get. But this drug was not that important to us in the overall scale of what we were working on as a company financially, so I had to withdraw. But the point is, when you hire in, in government, a bunch of people that are going to do something, when that something is gone, what are those people going to now do? It is rare in government to lay people off. So when the governor of New York and other governors say they're going to hire tens of thousands of people to contact Trace, which means when they hear that someone has had, that shows up with coronavirus, they're going to track back everyone they spoke to, everyone that they were near. Um, when this is over, what are these tens of thousands of people who have been investigating the who have been investigating the public, spying on you? What are they now going to do? I'm telling you, I'm a I'm a conservative. I'm not some crazy left wing anti government guy. This is scary. This is really frightening. There should be no contact tracing done. It's not going to work in our country, and you need to just put the masks on with draconian measures if people violate it, and don't do contact tracing. The last section, and we just spoke about some of that, which is the dangers of hiring a small army of people to do contact tracing, the dangers to our, to our liberties. Um, I want to go on with the dangerous section now. What are the dangers? If you've seen, maybe you've seen in the news, there are about 10 children who have died so far 
from an inflammatory disease that looks like Kawasaki syndrome. It's an inflammation of the blood vessels. I once heard a discussion between former heads of Homeland Security and the CIA. And they were talking about the Boston Marathon bombing. I should, I should have looked it up for this video. I can't remember now. There were maybe three people killed, seven people killed, something like that. What they said is, it was a tragedy, but it's not a catastrophe. It was a tragedy, but not a catastrophe. In other words, if we say, if there's a danger that one child could die, then we're not going to go out. We're going to keep everyone quarantined. All right. That's somewhere between stupidity or insanity or maybe both. There are about 900 children die every year in car accidents. We don't stop driving cars. There are about 400 children die every year in swimming pools. We don't stop swimming. We don't make policy decisions based on tragedies. You make them based on catastrophes. We know, heaven forbid, but it's true, a certain number of policemen will be killed each year. Oh, so we're no longer going to police society. No. We know a certain number of miners will die each year. We're going to stop mining. No. Each one is a tragedy. And don't think I'm trying to dismiss it. The heartbreak of each one, the heartbreak is, ho is horrendous. But they're tragedies and not catastrophes. Catastrophe is when a hurricane wipes out a city. That's a catastrophe. When there's a disruption to the whole society, that's a catastrophe. I would say the coronavirus has been a catastrophe. But it's not. But, but let's not mistaken. Um, um, tragedies with catastrophes, even though there is a small, tiny, tiny, tiny risk to children for Kawasaki, for Kawasaki like disease. I'm not going to give you the long medical name that's been given to it, but it's very, very small. And we don't live our lives. We don't run our society based on risks like that. On the other hand, <clears throat> there have been clusters of strokes that were seen in, that have been seen by neurologists in people in the ages of around 30s to 40s, which the neurologists don't see. And these people had coronavirus. And it does look like coronavirus is infecting and affecting um, the skin cells that line the uh, arteries, the, the high pressure blood vessels, and also the, the veins in the body. And the result of that has been blood clotting, which could also explain certain um, lack of oxygen in the blood that occurs. I don't want to talk about uh, ventilation perfusion mismatching right now. Uh, maybe another video. It's another more in-depth medical topic. But the question I raise is, and it's a question, are there long-term effects that will come out in five years, 10 years, 20 years across a large portion of the population, such as accelerated heart attacks and strokes, because the coronavirus is damaging these skin cells. They're called endothelial cells. Endo is an inside. Thelial, like epithelium, is skin on the outside. Endothelium, the skin on the inside the, of the blood vessels. Um, that's damaging these endothelial cells. And is there a long-term damage that occurs we don't know, and we're not going to know for many years. It's just a risk, but that's another reason why it would be very good for everyone to wear masks and to get a vac until we get a vaccine to protect everyone from this virus. Um, two, two last topics I want to talk about. Uh, a lot of people have been saying along the way, experts, that it's good. We're going to the summer months. Ultraviolet light kills the virus. It's not going to spread so much. The flu goes away during the summer. From the very beginning, coronavirus has been spreading very, very aggressively in warm parts of China and then through warm parts of, of, of the Indochina region. Um, now we see it spreading like crazy in Mexico, Latin America, Brazil. Um, the, 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 there's no reason to think that the warm summer is going to cause this, this infection to slow down at all. A good news, I think I would tell you, is uh, doctors say, there, you know, some doctors, Dr. Fauci and others, very worried 
that in the fall you're going to get people sick with the flu and coronavirus. Uh, don't be so sure. If everyone wears masks, if it becomes govern government mandated, like I said, with very severe punishments or fi fines for not wearing a mask, then when it comes to the fall, uh, you may find the flu doesn't spread. We might not even need flu vaccines for this coming winter if everyone keeps wearing a mask until we have a vaccine, which probably at the earliest will happen in January and might even take six months or a year after that. And I would ask you, if you have children, have you noted, if, and, you, and you've been doing social distancing or quarantine, have you noticed they're not getting sick anymore? Have you noticed they're not getting the common cold anymore? Um, if we wear masks, then I think we're really going to be protected. And uh, there are a few, other, of the, a few other behavioral changes needed. But we need to do this. We need to get back to work and back to normal society now. I just want to say I appreciate everyone who has listened to me, uh, supported me in these videos. Uh, by I don't want any, I don't ask for any financial support. There's no place to send me money. I'm not selling commercials. I don't want to sell you anything. I do this strictly as I consider my religious duty to try to help other people. But I do appreciate when you give me positive comments. Thank you.